The Old School Emulation Center is a retro computing initiative. It was initially for the renaming and cataloging of software files intended for use in emulators that later extended their work to be cataloged and preservation of also applications, firmware, device drivers, you, you name it. Now I'll put a link to this in the uh, description of the article, but I'm also going to give you a link to the, directly to the Internet Archive for this. Well, this is the Internet Archive, and this is the 2020 page. But first, we're going to go look at the 2012 page because it has a handy zip file. It's 13.9 gigabytes. So if you're an ST aficionado, this is the place to go to download just ST stuff. Sure, it's a little older than the 2017 or 2020 version, but you get a large, large uh, library of ST stuff. So you can click on this here. Now, it took me like two or three hours to download it, just to let you know. Now, besides that link, the one that I talked about on the right over here, if you notice so carefully in the middle of the page, you'll see the one that says Browse All Files, and you click on that. Now, take a second for it to populate. Uh, let me make sure. And But it'll come up, and there's a listing of all the files included in the individual sections. Of course, it's a lot easier way if you're looking for an individual type of category. Just use the uh, Controls uh, F for Find on the page and just type in what you want. For example, I typed in asteroids and uh, it only found one on the page and I found the zip file uh, almost immediately. Now, if you go to the 2020 archive, it's for all systems, but you don't have to download the entire zip. If you click on it, it'll expand. And you'll see here that there's other systems besides Atari. Uh, but if you scroll down, you'll eventually come uh, a list of alphabetical order of the different systems broken down into things like applications or images or things like that. If you notice, each one has a slightly different date uh, because they're uh, updated. Whenever they find more software to include or some more images or whatever, uh, the date will be different uh, than it was for uh, maybe a different file. Uh, and uh, this is just a compilation of the ones as of 2020. If we look down a little further here, we eventually get to the ST, which is what I use the most. There's the 8-bit stuff. Uh, we can scroll down even further. There's Jaguar, Lynx, and there's the ST. Obviously, they're in alphabetical order. So then it's just a matter of clicking on the one you want. And there's a little download link right here. You click on that. Your browser will open up a download link. And you just say, oh, save as. Choose where you want it to go. And uh, it'll download it there. And once you save it, I, uh, here's one I did with the ST Applications one. And you don't have to extract the entire file. Just click on it, and you'll see a list of the other zips inside. And then you can just copy any one of these individually to wherever else you want it. And depending upon your system speed, you don't have to wait for one to finish. You can sit there and have a download going and click on another one. You just click on the download arrow. And in this case, I'm using Edge. And when I do that, another one comes up. I just say Save As and choose the same location, and there we go. Now here are all the directories that I extracted from the large ST uh, extraction. I did it in different categories. Now this is also going to happen when you do a single uh, category for either the 8-bit or whatever. You're going to get something like this, which is a large collection of program zips, or maybe collections of images, whatever. And inside, you're probably going to find uh, a file, either a ST file for ST or other ones for the Atari 8-bit uh, system. Now, you don't have to do every one of these. You can just choose which ones you want and extract those. So if we look at a couple of these, uh, let's click on one of these to open the zip file. And you'll see there that there is an ST file uh, for this. And uh, it's simply in the, that directory. We'll just go ahead and do that for another one just to show you that one and it'll open up and extract it. And from here, we can copy this wherever you want to to read this particular file. Okay, you've got your files, in this case, in ST format. Uh, what do you do about it? Well, in this particular case, I'm going to run the uh, emulator on my PC here, and I'm going to navigate to wherever I want. Now, I'm going to do monochrome because I can see more files when I uh, look at the system. Uh, that way, I can see larger lists uh, more easily. Now, this is the Steam emulator, and on the right-hand side, you'll see the Disk uh, Manager, and you can navigate to wherever. In this case, I'm going to navigate to wherever those downloads were, those ST files that I extracted, and you'll see them down here. 
For 8-bit, you do the same kind of thing, uh, using maybe Altera. But you go over here, and you find this particular one, and you set it up to read it on your emulator. So here I am in an emulator. What's really crazy good about this one is that if you take a zip file and you drop it into the uh, drive, the A drive or whatever, uh, it'll actually detect all the zips inside of it. And look, here's all the different ones I have there. And if I click on one, it will load it as the A drive, not the entire zip file, uh, just that one individual one. And you can read it like you normally do a file. So once I choose one of these uh, to be in the emulator and the drive, so I just click there, I can go over here and just open up the A drive uh, by uh, running the emulator and then double clicking on it. Sure enough, there's the install for this particular program. And it doesn't matter if it's a program or image files or whatever, uh, you can read it there. Now here's my D drive, which I have for all my other normal stuff, not zipped. Uh, here's an apps directory, for example. Let's say I wanted to copy uh, that. I'm going to first uh, create a folder uh, for uh, first mail. And that's because that's the archive I opened up. Okay, so there's first mail, the new directory. Come over here to the A drive, which is really, in fact, a zip file. I'm going to select all. I'm going to simply drag and drop them over to my A drive. And it's going to say, OK. And then it's going to take a while to do it. So as we watch it finish here, uh, eventually we're going to see it all on my D drive over here. Let me close the A. And there I have it there. Again, whether it's a program file, whatever. Now it's on my PC on this emulator. It's actually a physical file on the PC. And then I can copy it wherever I want. Now Atari 8-bit stuff is no different than the ST stuff as far as getting the files and extracting them. You simply go to where uh, you downloaded, extract them into separate directories like you see here. And then you can open those up, and you'll be able to see the file type stored inside. Now, just like the ST, 8-bit has its own file types, and there are several of them, uh, depending upon what you're doing. But if we extract some of these and take a look, you'll see that uh, this here, if we open it up, it is a uh, one file type. And you can go to other ones, and you might be able to see uh, other ones. Depends upon now uh, what their purpose is. Now, to actually use them in an emulator, you'll have to use something like uh, the one I prefer to use, which is Altera. And you can go in here and set up your disk drives uh, here by uh, checking using our menu system. Now, you can access them by opening up the actual image itself, or you can set up disk drives. It all depends. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into a uh, big instruction manual on the Altera, but you just have to find how to load these files up. Uh, depending upon their type, and here's a lot of the types that are supported. I do want to mention there's an entire disk menu that you can set up uh, 15 disks uh, selections. So you can have all these different drives mounted. You just simply either create a new one or load a, a link to a existing uh, archive. And once you have that all set up with uh, multiple drives, you can start doing some copying of files between the zip file and the regular drive. Theoretically, you could use a disk directory here uh, in the operating system to move stuff around. Uh, it gets a little more complicated if you have to go back and remember all those DOS commands and all that stuff to use, but it's possible. But rather than mounting it and all that, there's a lot easier way using the Altera emulator, and that's we're going to use the File Explorer utility within it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go find an image that I want to take a look at. Oh, let's go to Castle Wolfenstein here, this ATR image. And there's the contents of that image right there. Now in Altera, one of the things that's not obvious is that you can use this. This has drag and drop features. If I go over here to the file structure, that I've created a temporary directory over here, and I come back over to the Disk Explorer within Altera, hit the Shift and the key on the bottom again, and select them all, and drag them, guess what? They all get written out as individual files accessible through your PC. Now, just to be clear, that doesn't mean they're accessible as a PC. If you go click on it, this sys file is not what you think it is. It's not a text file like it is in uh, maybe a uh, regular program. Let me show you here. It's got a little bit of data size to it. So if we click on some of these, you'll see that there are actually binary files exclusive to the Atari system. In this particular case, it'll read a text file, uh, but the other files uh, definitely will not read those. As you can see here, there's machine language uh, coded in here. 
And if I open up another one, there it is. It's binary file. It's not a text file that's readable uh, through your system. There are things like a text file, things like that you can read, of course. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you can't read these things. Well, what if you want to make a compilation disk of a bunch of Atari 8-bit pictures? Well, what I did is I took a, an old uh, DOS disk and I uh, went in here to File Explorer and I emptied it all out. I deleted all the files. So once I have a copy of that file and I go in here and I just highlight them and delete them, then I can come over here and grab any files I want, grab them and throw them in over here, and boom, I can add them to that particular uh, file, that, that new disk that I have. Now this is just to show how to move files in between. It's not a bootable disk, it's not a copy of a game or anything like that. Just so that you, you can use some of these collections that you've downloaded and put them onto your own disk in your own format uh, so you can view it whenever you want. So instead of creating a video in a video about moving files for use on actual Atari hardware, but here's a nice resource, which is a mirror of the Wii, the wiki for Atari. If we go there, you'll see that it's the Atari forum, but you have to dig through all this stuff for all the different subjects. And this section is all about transferring files. And so there's a lot of different ways here for floppy disks, for USB. Uh, there's uh, adapters for physical Atari systems. Uh, those of you that are already working with the Atari actual hardware are probably already familiar with all this. So, But I just wanted to point everybody uh, to this in case they didn't have this resource already. And of course, I'll put a link to this uh, in the description of this video. So there you have it, a large resource that you can download a whole bunch of files together or separate zip files for a particular system and subject. Hey, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. If you want more, don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description of this video.